Hello Gun Geeks, I'm Destiny from Guns Gear and Fitness and this is the Super Bio Indestructible Gun Belt. In this video I will give a comprehensive review of this belt and I'm going to try to break it. Hey Gun Geeks, I said let's break some belts. So we're going to break some belts. What I have here is a two and a half ton service jack and this is a weight that's just extending the reach basically because otherwise I think we get like 14, apparently 14.17 inches of clearance. And this is a cheap, like, $10 Walmart dress belt, because it's so fancy. And we're going to try and break this. I'm not going to be sitting right here as I try to break it, but we're going to see what the limits are, and then we'll compare it. I've got a couple other belts here, and let's try this out. When I look at a carry gun, or a carry belt, I need to know that it is going to strongly secure a firearm to my person. That means... When I attach it to this holster, I need to know that it's not gonna wobble around when I'm moving, or even worse, when I'm drawing. I need to have confidence that I can carry something, regardless of size, whether it's this ridiculously heavy M9, or maybe a slim little XDS, but that I don't have to worry that it will keep it exactly where I need to every day. What makes a gun belt strongly secure then? It's the construction what goes into the belt, like the material, the fastener, how it adjusts. This particular gun belt is a little more traditional looking, which I appreciate for the fashion of it, just as much as for the function. But the material, even though it looks like it's leather, it's actually thermal polymer polyurethane, which is a fancy way of saying it's a man-made material that's oil, water, and chemical resistant, as opposed to my last gun belt, which you can see is pretty well loved here. This one's a leather gun belt, or a gun belt like this, a competition gun belt with a super stiff, or super sturdy overbelt, and then a nylon underbelt, or Something like this, which I don't recommend. It's quite fashionable being a fabulous zebra print, but I went through so many belts like this before I discovered how important it is and how helpful it is to carry with a good gun belt. Don't try this at home. Let's break it. Okay, right now it's just tight enough. Oh gosh, it's already starting to get really taut. Okay, we're getting close. I'm gonna lean back a little bit because I'm a little worried that it's gonna snap pretty pretty soon here. <laughs> okay, that was a little anticlimactic, but it sure did break. And we can see here, it broke right where the buckle attaches. It just boop, popped right out. You can see right where it separated, right here. Just popped right out. Or you could try something like this. See, that's how you know it's safe. But no, really, I don't recommend carrying with this. It's very flimsy, but we'll get into that. The material of a gun belt. Let's get these out of the way. Now I mentioned that this is thermopolymer polyurethane. Oh my gosh, this gun belt is so in my, there we go. And one of the benefits of using material like this is that it's very resistant, not just resistant to chemicals like the oil and water, or chemicals and oil and water, but it's also just a strong material. Think about it, if you're, wearing, you're carrying a gun every day, you're gonna be buckling it and unbuckling it every day. You're gonna be putting your holster on it every day. Now, you can see with this leather gun belt, this is where I, my holster rests. It's starting to really show some love. And this is where I buckle it most often. Generally, I found thicker materials are, are more wear resistant than thin ones like, like say this, or like your typical dress belts. I found with a lot of belts like this that I was trying to make work, they would break either where the weight was resting, um, where the buckle attached, like say in one of these loops here, I'd start to get um, cracks and then sometimes it would just split like this. This would be an awful gun belt. This particular material is super resistant just 
to, uh, to foreign contaminants. Not that gum leather isn't, but when you have a belt that's made of leather, you have to consider it is an animal material. It will eventually decay and wear and stretch, and water will make it stretch more. So that's, that's something that you may want to consider when you're evaluating a gun belt for yourself. Something that factors into my use of a gun belt, too, is just a limitation of the clothing that I wear, and that's dimension. So this Super Bio belt is the women's Super Bio, but I also have the men's Super Bio belt by Daltec Force. And the chief difference between these is in the dimensions. Let me get my me tape measure out here. Here we are. Okay. So the women's gun belt, as you can see, is narrower. It's about one and a quarter inches versus this men's belt, which is about one and a half, thereabouts. It's also just a little bit thinner, like really just, just a touch thinner. Although with wearing both of these, I've not been able to distinguish one being stronger than the other. But I did find that this one fit in a lot more of my pairs of pants than did this one, simply because it's a little less, or it's a little narrower and a little thinner. Weight support is a huge part of what makes an effective gun belt. Um, Yes, it needs to be able to hold up your pants, or at least I need that because I don't have any hips. But also because I have this penchant for wearing heavy firearms, uh, it just plain would get, it gets uncomfortable if you don't have a gun belt that helps to disperse the weight over the whole length of the, or more of the belt. If you have a, a less solid belt or a weaker belt that doesn't um, resist flex as well, uh, that weight ends up centered on one spot, which actually you can see a really good example of that in this belt. So you can see how there's a noticeable curve in this belt because this is where it carries the weight and it has started to deform. And if I continue wearing it a lot, it will actually tear here. I'm gonna kill a zebra belt, but it's for science, so it's gonna be okay. I forgot to count last time, uh, it was 13. Let's compare with the zebra belts. We'll see if hopefully my zebra can last a little bit longer. Ready? One, two, oh man, three. We're already starting to cinch it pretty tight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh geez, that startled me a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's uh, pull that out of there and take a look. There we go. You can see it snapped in a different spot than the last one, right at the belt loops in which it was resting. Just rip. That was it. That's all she wrote. Good effort, Zebra. With the previous belts that I have destroyed in that way. But you want it. Uh, you want the belt stiff enough to minimize flex and ease weight dispersion. But you do need it flexible enough to like contour to your body. Which, when I first got these Super Bio belts, they were pretty stiff, but a few hours of wearing them, and now I find them to be comfortable. Another factor that you're, you might want to consider is the fastening and adjustability method. Because of the fashion preferences that I have, I do like a belt that has a traditional, more traditional buckle and notches. But nylon belts that utilize sliders, like my Doctor Who belt, although it's not a gun belt. The nylon gun belts, or there are nylon gun belts that do utilize the same kind of slider. So you have basically an infinite amount of customization for regardless of what pants you're wearing or what size belt you're wearing. With belts that use these belt holes and a buckle, you're limited by how far away each notch is and how many notches you have. I found that this belt has been sufficient regardless of what I carry, whether it's like a, a polymer single stack or my full size M9. I generally I'll wear within one of these three notches. That seems to be pretty comfortable. Uh, you do also have to consider factor that in though when you go to purchase the belt. Daltec Force recommends that you measure your waist, whatever your, you know, waist measurement is 
and then add two inches. I found that I had to add more like four inches, partly because I wear girl pants and they ride a lot lower on my hips than like normal, like normal person pants. Um, oh, also with adjustability, Velcro belts are like infinitely adjustable too. So if that's something that you prefer, you might want to look into one of those style belts instead. Okay, this next belt is like an actual legit leather gun belt. No more $10 Walmart, whatever. I spent like 55 bucks on it. I wore it every day for two years, very proudly. But it's time for it to die for science. All right, here we go. One, two, this setup is different. Three, oh, it's starting to creak. Four, oh no, oh no. Oh, it's starting to break. That was five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, there it goes. Man, it worked for it. It's still like kind of attached by like two strings. Let's do another, another 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, snap. 15, 16. There are still two strings holding this together. I don't know how. Oh, there they go. Okay. Let me show you this here. Technically this broke at nine. It wasn't a belt anymore. There were just two strings, but I wanted to see how long it would take until we snapped those. And you can see here where it broke is the component that holds the buckle in place. No more belt. Conspicuousness and fashion. For me, fashion is a consideration, not just because I'm female, but also because of the environments in which I carry. I don't want my gun belt to scream like high speed, low drag. I want it to look like just a normal, nice belt that I can wear with any outfit, not just like I'm gonna go train at the gun range. Now for some of you, fashion may not even be a consideration, but things that are gonna contribute to that conspicuousness are like the thickness or the width or stitching or also colors, texture what kind of buckles you have, whether or not it's interchangeable, the style of adjustment. Oh, yeah, maybe I'm looking at that because I'm a girl and I do like, you know, dressing cute. But even if you just want an OD green belt to go with your OD green holster and your OD green firearm, oh, you might want to look into maybe not this particular style of leather-ish. You might have more fashion interests in a textile belt, but I like being able to dress up and still not have to sacrifice carrying. So for me, this works. Ooh, price is another important factor that I consider when I'm looking at buying a gun belt. That was one of the things that I found most staggering when I first purchased my very first gun belt, which my first like official gun belt was this guy. And I probably worn it about two years. It's, it is leather, but it's nice, nice thick leather with good solid stitching. So it has held up um, surprisingly well for two years of carrying it, carrying every day. But you can see sort of the, some of the wear here. One of the things I was most surprised about when I first picked it up though was just how expensive it was. And this was even one of the cheaper ones and I still dropped like 50 bucks on this belt or 60, I think it was. Some of the things that will affect your belt's price is the material. If you want like an exotic leather gun belt, you're gonna spend more. If you want more customization options, like these uh, super bio belts, you can get for the women's like four different buckles or, or you have four different buckle options for the women's or for the men's you have two different buckle options. But I found that materials like this, a little less expensive. Uh, this particular belt, this female super bio at right now is running about $55. Whereas the men's is running about $50. There's a lower end of that scale um, if you're looking at more of the textile belts like nylon weaves that can be a little bit cheaper or you can end up dropping easily 100 to 150 if you want like more exotic leathers and different textures or more interchangeability. But another thing that you're paying for with a gun belt is quality. You are going to spend a little bit more than, you know, your cheap $10 belts. With the Super Bios, you're paying for your oil, water, and chemical resistance, and strength. And I would love to show you like just how resistant these belts are. So let's go uh, test them out. 
The other belts up to this point have not even mattered. It has all been about this Daltec Force bull belt, the Super Bio. The jack we're using is a two and a half ton jack and the belt is rated to 6,000 pounds, which is definitely more than two and a half tons. So we shouldn't be able to break it. And I'm totally excited to see how it responds. I have it in the same position, which if you notice, it's just just enough pressure just to kind of keep it attached. If I were to wiggle it, it would come off of the jack the same way that I did it for the other belts. But this is the big kahuna. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna get out of the way now and we'll start the count. Okay, guys. One, two, three. We still have a good bit of tension left to go. We have room four, five, Six, it's starting to get a little tighter. Oh my God, seven. It's not creaking. The leather gun belt was creaking at this point. This one isn't creaking yet. Eight. Oh, it's starting to get really tight. Nine. Oh, is it starting to stretch? Oh man, okay, okay. Here's 10. I can feel this is starting to get, I'm like moving the jack now. Is that 10? Can I even, 10. I like need a new solution because the gun belt is so strong. I can't seem to move, like I can't seem to get lift out of the jack anymore. This is crazy. Uh, 11? Like, I can't. Like I have to figure out something else. Like can't, I can't push this anymore down. There's like 11 right there. That's all she wrote. Like I can't even move it anymore. I'm just just moving around the entire jack. It's like all moving as one unit with my weights that I've attached, which is just bonkers. I have like immobilized the jack. I can't move it anymore. Ladies and gents, this is a strong belt. 13, 14, oh my gosh. This, it's, it feels like it's really tight, but it keeps on going. 15. Oh my God. Can I even move it? I am just, look at this. Do you see how ridiculous this is? This is supposed to be 16, but I'm not getting hardly any movement out of the jack. The jack is supposed to have like 14 or more inches of clearance, and I can't get it any higher than that. Not that I'm not trying. Okay, let me, I'm trying to not get caught with a belt to the face. I don't know how I can do this so this doesn't wiggle on me. Nope, that's not going to work. Shoot. Nope, I can't do it. I can't, like, that's it. That's all she wrote. I don't have any other, like, more clever solutions. I cannot get this jack to move. I was sure that after breaking all the other belts so easily that the super buy would break. Just seemed like that was what it was going to do. But the math makes sense. This belt is rated to 6,000 pounds. This jack does not generate that much force. And you can tell we've locked it up. I mean, the belt feels really strong. The jack cannot move anymore. It's locked up. We tried off camera. Uh, my brother tried. My dad tried. That's it. That's all she wrote. The Super Bio is stronger than this two and a half ton jack. 